The COVID-19 pandemic has come to America. As of Thursday, there were 1,376 confirmed cases, up from just 221 a week before. As has been the case in every country that has seen an outbreak, calls for the government to act have been growing. And on Wednesday night, it did. In a televised address to the nation, President Donald Trump announced travel restrictions on people from 26 European countries coming into America, active from today. The travel ban makes little sense. For a start, it only applies to Schengen countries, despite the fact that the UK and Ireland are just as severely affected as places in mainland Europe, Italy accepted. And US citizens abroad are permitted to re-enter regardless of where they have been or who they have come into contact with. It is also a dramatic shift from a White House which, up until now, has shown very little coordinated response at all. On information, the official Centers for Disease Control has been slow in updating the public, while the president himself has issued a slew of misleading statements about the virus, from advising those who have it to go into work, to promising it would disappear because it's like a miracle to insisting that a vaccine was coming relatively soon, when the estimates are 12 to 18 months. In terms of testing, America's fragmented healthcare system has not been able to cope. As of Thursday, the U.S. had tested around 11,000 specimens in total. In contrast, South Korea is testing 20,000 people per day. Last week, Vice President Mike Pence, who has been put in charge of crisis response, admitted that there was a shortage of tests. Yesterday, a top health official said that the testing system was failing. With so much that is still unknown, there is clearly no correct way to deal with the pandemic, and countries are learning as they go. South Korea appears to have had the best results with its trace, test, treat strategy, so far it has had nearly 8,000 cases, but just 66 deaths, and the number of new cases per day is falling dramatically. Italy, meanwhile, remains in lockdown, but the death toll keeps rising. China's quarantine rules are by far the most draconian, as is uniquely possible in an autocratic regime, but there are fears that the virus could resurface as soon as they are lifted and people move again. And in the UK, there is anger that the government has not yet taken the social distancing measures seen elsewhere, such as banning large public gatherings and closing schools, while experts are still debating the merits of such policies and weighing them against the inevitable economic impact. The sight of 600 odd MPs crammed into a poorly ventilated chamber on Wednesday, when one of their colleagues had just tested positive, caused a certain amount of alarm. But the way the situation is unfolding in the US is different. Other world leaders have tried to strike a balance between. For more on this story, visit the news article link.